नमस्कार अ वॉर्म वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज अभिनीत शुक्ला एंड विद मी इज अनिता आनंद ब्रिंग लिम्सेस ऑफ द मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शेल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी होल्स वर्चुअल मीटिंग विद यूएस प्रेसिडेंट जो बाइडन says India and US are natural partners. Prime Minister raises concerns over Russia Ukraine war, expresses hope that ongoing talks between Russia and Ukraine will pave the way for peace. India US 2+2 ministerial dialogue to take place in Washington, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar to lead the Indian delegation. Shahbaz Sharif becomes 23rd Prime Minister of Pakistan. President Maithripala Sirisena calls for formation of an interim government in Sri Lanka amid economic crisis and Emmanuel Macron to face Marine Le Pen for presidential election runoff on April 24th. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday said that India and US are natural partners as they are two of the biggest democracies of the world. In a virtual interaction with US President Joe Biden this evening, Mr Modi said the talks are being held at a time when situation in Ukraine remains worrisome. He said that till a few weeks ago more than 20,000 Indians were stranded in Ukraine and most of them were young students. The Prime Minister also said that India places importance on the safety of the civilian population in Ukraine and the uninterrupted supply of humanitarian aid to them including medicines and relief materials. He informed that on the demand of Ukraine India is sending another consignment of medicines very soon. Mr Modi stated that the recent killings of innocent civilians in Bucha city of Ukraine was very disturbing. He pointed out that India condemned it and demanded a fair investigation. The prime minister hoped that the ongoing talks between Russia and Ukraine will pave the way for peace. Is pure ghatnakram ke dauran maine Ukraine aur Rus dono ke rashtrapatiyon se कई बार फोन पर बातचीत की मैंने न सिर्फ शांति की अपील की बल्कि मैंने राष्ट्रपति पुतिन को यूक्रेन के राष्ट्रपति के साथ सीधी बातचीत का सुझाव भी रखा हमारी संसद में भी यूक्रेन के विषय पर बहुत विचार विस्तार से चर्चा हुई हाल में बूचा शहर में निर्दोष नागरिकों की हत्याओं की खबर बहुत ही चिंताजनक थी हमने इसकी तुरंत निंदा की और एक निष्पक्ष जांच की मांग भी की है हम आशा करते हैं कि रूस और यूक्रेन के बीच चल रही बातचीत से शांति का मार्ग निकलेगा द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड ही स्पोक ऑन द फोन सेवरल टाइम्स विद द प्रेसिडेंट्स ऑफ यूक्रेन एंड रशिया एंड अपील फॉर पीस ही सेड ही आल्सो सजेस्टेड प्रेसिडेंट व्लादिमीर पुतिन टू हैव डायरेक्ट टॉक्स विद द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ यूक्रेन ही फर्दर स्टेटेड दैट द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ यूक्रेन हैज आल्सो बीन डिस्कस्ड इन ग्रेटर डिटेल इन इंडियन पार्लियामेंट Mr Modi praised President Biden for giving a very important slogan at the very beginning of his tenure Democracies can deliver. He said success of India US partnership is the best way to make this slogan meaningful. He said he agreed with US President Joe Biden that India US partnership can contribute to the solution of many global problems. The Prime Minister said India is celebrating 75 years of independence and in the next 25 years Indo US relations will play an important role. He thanked President Biden for taking the initiative for this virtual interaction. पिछले साल सितंबर में जब मैं वाशिंगटन आया था और जिसका आपने अभी जिक्र भी किया और तब आपने कहा था कि भारत अमेरिका पार्टनरशिप बहुत सी वैश्विक समस्याओं के समाधान में योगदान दे सकती है मैं आपकी बात से पूर्णतया सहमत हूं विश्व के दो सबसे बड़े और पुराने लोकतंत्रों के रूप में हम नेचुरल पार्टनर्स हैं और पिछले कुछ वर्षों में हमारे संबंधों में जो प्रगति हुई है जो नया मोमेंटम बना है आज से एक दशक पहले भी शायद ऐसी कल्पना करना मुश्किल था आपने अपने कार्यकाल के शुरू में ही एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण स्लोगन दिया था डेमोक्रेसी कैन डिलीवर भारत और अमेरिका की पार्टनरशिप की सफलता इस स्लोगन को सार्थक करने का सबसे उत्तम जरिया है इस साल भारत अपनी स्वतंत्रता की पचहत्तरवा वर्ष ग्रांट मना रहा है और हम अपने डिप्लोमेटिक रिलेशंस की पचहत्तरवीं सालगिरह भी मना रहे हैं मुझे विश्वास है कि भारत की अगले 25 सालों की विकास यात्रा में 
अमेरिका के साथ हमारी मित्रता एक अभिन्न अंग रहेगी इन हिज ओपनिंग रिमार्क यूएस प्रेसिडेंट जो बाइडन सेड इंडिया एंड यूएस आर टू वाइब्रेंट डेमोक्रेसीज विच शेयर अ स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड ग्रोइंग मेजर डिफेंस पार्टनरशिप He said continued consultation and dialogue are key to ensure that India US partnership continues to grow stronger. We share a strong and growing major defense partnership. At the root of our partnership is a deep connection between our people, ties of family, of friendship and of shared values. On that note I want to welcome uh, India's humanitarian support for the people of Ukraine who are suffering a horrific assault including a tragic shelling in a train station last week that killed dozens. of innocent children and women and uh, civilians attempting to flee the violence. The United States and India are going to continue our close consultation on how to manage the destabilizing effects of this Russian war. And I'm looking forward to our discussions today, Mr. Prime Minister. Our continued consultation and dialogue are key to ensuring the US-Indian relationship continues to grow deeper and stronger. The fourth India-US 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue will get underway in Washington later tonight. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar will lead the Indian delegation. The US delegation will be led by Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Secretary of Defence Lloyd Austin. The dialogue would enable both the sides to undertake a comprehensive review of cross-cutting issues in the India-US bilateral agenda related to foreign policy, defence and security with the objective of providing strategic guidance and vision for further consolidating the relationship. The 2 plus 2 dialogue mechanism will also provide an opportunity to exchange views about important regional and global developments. Ahead of the 2 plus 2 dialogue, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh held a bilateral meeting with his US counterpart Lloyd Austin in Washington DC. Secretary East in the Ministry of External Affairs Saurabh Kumar held bilateral talks with his Cambodian counterpart Goy Kumong at Phnom Penh in Cambodia on Monday. They reviewed progress in bilateral issues and exchanged views on regional and multilateral issues of mutual concern. The Secretary East reaffirmed India's support for Cambodia's successful chairmanship of ASEAN in 2022. He appreciated the role played by Cambodia, including that by Deputy Prime Minister Prak Su Khon as the Special Envoy of ASEAN Chair on Myanmar. Both sides had comprehensive discussions on bilateral cooperation in diverse areas including political, economic, commercial, trade and investments, defense and security, development partnership, connectivity, capacity building and cultural cooperation. They appreciated the close cooperation between India and Cambodia and agreed to further deepen the bilateral relations particularly in areas such as defense and security, health connectivity capacity building and development cooperation the two sides also exchanged views on regional and international issues of mutual interest a group of scientists from indian institute of chemical technology iict hyderabad have designed a hybrid material which can absorb greenhouse gas methane and convert it into clean hydrogen they have simulated a process of capturing carbon dioxide and converted it to high purity hydrogen from non fuel grade bioethanol these scientists have also designed a facility that can test such materials and help further carbon capture research at the institute ministry of science and technology in a statement today said that these new materials and processes for carbon capture and utilization could show new light for global warming challenge in pakistan shahbaz sharif has become the 23rd prime minister of the country after taking oath he was administered the oath by senate chairman sadiq sandarani earlier on monday parliament elected the opposition's joint candidate sharif as the country's new prime minister the pakistan muslim league nawaz pmln chief got 174 votes in the 342 member national assembly Before the voting process the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf lawmakers walked out of the National Assembly shouting slogans against the opposition party's leadership and the US after their candidate Shah Mahmood Qureshi announced his decision to boycott the session According to local media reports the poll took place under the chairmanship of MNA Ayaz Sadiq 2 days after the lower house of parliament voted in favor of removing Imran Khan from the office following a nearly 14 hour standoff between the opposition and Khan's ruling party that started on Saturday morning 
Mr. Shahbaz had earlier contested for the Prime Ministership in 2018, as well as in which Imran had received 176 votes and he could bag only 96 votes at that time. He has served three times as Punjab's Chief Minister. Mr. Shahbaz is the younger brother of PMLN Supremo and tri-selected Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated Muhammad Shahbaz Sharif on his election as the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Mr. Modi said, India desires peace and stability in a region free of terror so that we can focus on our development challenges and ensure the well-being and prosperity of our people. In today's Hotspot section, we bring a discussion on political developments in Pakistan and the democracy. In conversation are G. Parthasarthi, former diplomat, and Manish Anand, journalist. Another spell of uh, political instability in Pakistan has taken place and uh, once uh, the army's poster boy Imran Khan has been ousted from the power and the Pakistan National Assembly session is currently underway to elect uh, the joint uh, opposition nominee uh, Shahbaz Sarif as the next Prime Minister. I am Manish Anand and with me is uh, a former diplomat uh, G. Parthasharthi. Ambassador Parthasarthi, it's a usual history of Pakistan repeating again that uh, no Prime Minister there ever could uh, complete its full term. How do you see the current development? Current developments were waiting to happen. Imran Khan had uh, sort of thought the being Prime Minister of Pakistan would be a permanent job. He earned the wrath of the army very early because of interfering with the promotions and postings in the military. Most important, he developed a close relationship with the previous head of the intelligence services there that caused unease in the military and the price had to be paid. This really was the beginning of his trouble. Once he earned the wrath of the military, there were enough space available for the military and others to uh, raise the banner against him. And uh, initially he agreed to many things and then tried to back out. And that landed him in trouble. Indeed, uh, uh, Shahbaz Sarif uh, is uh, not a newcomer in politics. He was uh, Pakistan's Punjab province chief minister and younger brother of former Prime Minister Nawaz Sarif, besides mm. being a steel tycoon. Mm. Uh, how do you see uh, the mainstream politician coming back uh, uh, in the seat of power? And uh, do you think he would be able to give a sort of political stability in Pakistan? Well, I've known Shahbaz Sharif personally since the days of the Vajpayee's visit to Pakistan. He was then uh, chief minister of Punjab. He took a lot of interest in development work. He did very well. He did not acquire an aura of corruption which most Pakistani politicians at that level acquire. And uh, we found it pleasant to deal with him during the Vajpayee visit. He is unquestionably a good administrator respected as a chief minister, but he has always functioned in the shadow of his elder brother, Nawaz. Therefore, the fact is that he is now playing a new role of leadership because the brother is in exile. Uh, he maintained his uh, good relationship with the military, including the ISI. So it's, it's a long uh, relationship, and he has been a consensus man. Now, whether he becomes a consensus man and what happens to his brother now in exile, these are uh, major issues because control of his brother on the party is, is very, very deep. And uh, we'll have to see how it works. Indeed. But uh, Ambassador Parthasarathy, we would like to go a little back to understand what uh, these developments portend for the future. The Conference of Organization of Islamic Countries uh, took place in Islamabad. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi visited Islamabad. And uh, mm. sooner uh, Imran Khan was in Russia to meet uh, Vladimir Putin. Mm. Do you think uh, some dots connect uh, that these things were in the pipeline? There are several dots because there are on discussions on Afghanistan. We did have China, Pakistan and the Russians being together and working it together. That was a point which we took notice of which were the, were the Russians were doing really in, in a way bypassing us. But we, we never took it too seriously because in any case we shared a lot of information with the Russians and, uh, and they were not going to back any hardcore fundamentalists who would cause problems. But the Russian interest was largely because of Central Asia. 
another aspect is that uh, imran khan could not deliver on army's uh, expectation that uh, pakistan's being on the grey list of financial action task force and uh, shahbaz sharif indeed uh, will have this uh, as the topmost uh, of his task on hand uh, at the same time a few days back uh, the mumbai terror mastermind uh, hafiz said was given a sentence for 31 years by an anti terror court which the foreign media publications are describing as a ruse uh, to get pakistan off this list do you think uh, that sharif has a clear task on hand no absolutely that arrest of the elite leader is just uh, pure sham he knows too much he would have written too much and his relatives are still running the show in the lashkar e taiba so it was done primarily to please americans and to appease the financial action task force that they have taken action against a person who has been internationally described to be a terrorist another aspect uh, ambassador partha sarthi is uh, that uh, pakistan's democracy remains fragile and uh, we have a lot of stake because um, being an immediate neighbor and the country which has uh, terrorism as a factory how does india pakistan relationship uh, shapes out from here well some of my own uh, pakistani friends have told me they are ruled by the all three almighty a's allah army and america <laughs> there is no place for the pakistani political leadership in this equation the reality is that unlike india we brought about social reform largely by land reforms which knocked out the feudal rural structure likewise we worked hard on bringing about a measure of social equality pakistan i am afraid still remains a feudal society all these politicians or the bulk of them own thousands of acres of land as especially the very rich in the families so pakistan remains a feudal society and without the essential requirements for social change you can't keep up high rates of growth social change is an integral part of higher growth and in the case of pakistan as i said even today if you take them their mps bulk of them will be big zamindars owning th- hundreds or thousands of acres of land that rural structure has not changed rural education therefore has not come and this is a basic problem pakistan faces it has not invested enough in human resource development indeed um, now that we talk uh, within a few hours indian prime minister narendra modi and the american president joe biden will have a virtual summit ahead of the 2 plus 2 uh, ministerial dialogue do you think uh, that uh, india's neighborhood uh, could also be on the agenda india's neighborhood will be definitely on the agenda but biden has a one point agenda at the moment which is ukraine in the case of ukraine we have made it very clear that that has to be a political settlement the situation is complex true coming back to pakistan uh, ambassador partha sarthi uh, i think uh, this is uh, one of the rare moments in our memories that uh, uh, one political party is uh, mobilizing popular support against the army in the social media space uh, the pti supporters are burning the pakistani flags and raising slogans against army do you think there could be any uh, possible course correction in pakistan's uh, discourse <laughs> you know imran khan seems to have been determined to commit one mistake after another as i mentioned earlier the three rulers are allah army and america it's very strange of america that they didn't understand there would be a russian reaction with the sort of agreement they signed in, on november 10th with the ukrainians true uh, but how, how do you map the future of uh, pti now onwards because the mainstream pa- uh, parties there are coming back to power well mainstream parties i think you will find imran's political influence declining you cannot in pakistan take on the military in that manner i recall after kargil when there were the slightest differences between nawaz sharif and the military the military to kova and the musharraf so i think uh, one has to be very very careful in these matters and dealing with the military in this manner by imran khan he is known to be you know quick in his decision making but uh, in the pakistani scheme of things 
you will be seeing the desertions in his own party. Ambassador Parthasarthi, uh, today there is another development uh, that uh, a number of Western envoys uh, have said that international aid to Afghanistan will be linked to the Taliban allowing girls to access education there in the schools. And uh, army in Pakistan also had expectations that uh, the Taliban would get international recognition. So how do you think Shehbaz Sarif uh, going to meet international expectation on Taliban and Afghanistan? This is going to be a problem because the Taliban are very firm in this sort of thing. Uh, the Americans, uh, and I finally, uh, frankly, in the 21st century, sort of treating your 50, more than 50% of your population, your entire women folk, as second class citizens, is to put it mildly deplorable. But that is the practice the uh, Taliban have followed. That is their version of Islam that they follow. It's a tribal society also. So uh, they are going to get squeezed very badly and uh, already there are problems between the Taliban and Pakistan on a number of issues including the location of the border, the, the Durand line, the Taliban have never accepted. So uh, there are going to be complications be between in, in the Pakistan-Taliban relationship which will grow because as I said the Taliban are a law unto themselves and I can't see thanks to the Pakistanis anybody now uh, replacing them in a hurry. They're well settled. But um, I do not see either the Russians or the Chinese or the Central Asians closing all relations with them. They will have to deal with whoever is there. Uh, and it's, it's, it's going to be a much more complex situation. And Mr. Parthasarthi, you have analyzed uh, the political developments in Pakistan very deeply. Thank you so much. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Former Sri Lankan President Maitri Palasarisana has said that an interim government under the new Prime Minister must be formed to resolve the ongoing economic crisis. New PM proposal was... Uh, among the 11 proposals submitted by the Sri Lankan Freedom Party-led coalition, Mr. Sirisana said before the interim government is set up, the 19th Amendment to the Constitution must be reintroduced. Sri Lankan government allies had also written to President Gotabaya Rajapaksha requesting the removal of his brother Mahindra Rajapaksha from the PM's post. The 11 coalition allies of the government and the independent group of former Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna SLPP parliamentarians led by Anura Priya Darshana Yapa have written to President Gotabaya requesting the removal of PM Hinda and the appointment of a new cabinet under the new PM. Colombo Page reported on Sunday. The letter had also mentioned a proposal to overcome the ongoing political and economic crisis in the country. Sri Lanka is currently under its worst ever economic and financial crisis, forcing people to take the streets and stage demonstrations. French leader Emmanuel Macron and challenger Marine Le Pen have qualified for a very tightly fought presidential election runoff on April 24 with partial results putting Macron in the first place ahead of Le Pen after the first round voting, other major candidates admitted defeat. Macron told supporters that nothing is decided and the battle they will wage in the next 15 days will be decisive for France and Europe. He urged all voters to rally behind him on April 24 to stop Ms. Le Pen from ruling the European Union's second largest economy. IFOP pollsters predicted a very tight runoff with 51% for Macron and 49% for Le Pen. The gap is so tight that victory either way is within the margin of error. Other pollsters offered a slightly bigger margin in favor of Macron with up to 54%. But that was in any case much narrower than in 2017 when Macron beat Le Pen with 66.1% of the votes. With 88% of the votes counted for first round yesterday, Macron garnered 27.41% of the votes and Le Pen 24.9%. Union Information and Broadcasting Secretary Apoorva Chandra convened a meeting on Monday to discuss the media publicity to be given to this year's Amarnath Yatra. 
After the meeting, he said, a huge number of pilgrims expected to arrive for the Yatra. Jammu and Kashmir Chief Secretary Arun Kumar Mehta, Principal Secretary Rohit Kansal, Shri Amarnath Ji Shrine Board CEO Nitishwar Kumar, and senior officials from the central government, including Joint Secretary, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Vikram Sahai, Principal Director General News, All India Radio and Venudhar Reddy, Director General Doordarshan, Mayank Agrawal, Additional Director General, Press Information Bureau, Srinagar, Rajinder Chaudhary, besides other senior officials, participated in the meeting. India successfully flight-tested anti-tank guided missile Helena on Monday. The missile was launched from an indigenously developed helicopter at high altitude ranges. The Defence Minister said it is one of the most advanced anti-tank weapon in the world. The flight test was jointly conducted by the teams of scientists of Defence Research and Development Organisation, DRDO, Indian Army and Indian Air Force. The Ministry said the flight trials were conducted from an advanced light helicopter and the missile was fired successfully, engaging simulated tank target. Shanghai has reported more than 26,000 locally transmitted COVID-19 cases during the past 24 hours as anxiety spreads in other cities of China, including Beijing, after about similar lockdowns being implemented to contain outbreaks driven by Omicron and its sub-variants. Shanghai had been reporting a record number of cases every day for the past two weeks. State media reported the city now has over 200,000 positive cases since 1st of March, a vast majority of them mild in nature, overwhelming both the health and civic infrastructure of China's financial hub, with cities 25 million residents angered over the endless cycle of tests and quarantine. In hockey, Germany steamrolled England in an 8 nil demolition to set up a summit clash with the Netherlands in FIH Hockey Women's Junior World Cup in South Africa, while Germany went on a goal-scoring spree against England, the Netherlands overcame India 3-0 in a well-fought encounter in which the winners scored two goals in the final quarter. And now a report from the business desk. The Sensex plunged 483 points or 0.81 percent to finish at 58,965. The Nifty also tumbled 109 points or 0.62 percent to settle at 17,675. In the global share markets, Asian stocks indices fell while bond yields climbed as caution gripped markets ahead of the U.S. inflation data and central bank meetings in many countries. Hong Kong's Hang Seng tumbled 3 percent and China's Shanghai Composite Index declined 2.6 percent. Singapore Straits Times and Japan's Nikkei both ended 0.6% down. South Korea's Kospi slipped 0.3%. European share markets were mixed in the intraday trade. Oil prices dropped more than 4% a barrel. Brent crude prices tumbled below $100 on plans to release record volumes of crude and oil products from strategic stocks and on continuing coronavirus lockdowns in China. And in the forex market, the rupee weakened 5 paise against the U.S. dollar. The domestic currency closed at 75 rupees and 96 paise per dollar. Nishit Kumar for World News, All India Radio. Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. Global Times reports Shanghai on Sunday registered 914 locally transmitted COVID-19 cases and 25,173 local asymptomatic infections the city now has over 200,000 positive cases from March 1st. ANI reports students for a Free Tibet France group, along with five other Tibetan associations, organized a protest outside the Chinese embassy in Paris on Saturday against three self-immolations that took place in their country. The Himalayan Times reports that the three former finance ministers have drawn the attention of the government to pay attention to economic stability, development and good governance. The Dawn writes, U.S. Embassy has advised American staff at U.S. Consulate General Lahore not to venture out for the off-compound movements. ANI reports that the Balochistan government has asked the Election Commission of Pakistan, ECP, to postpone the local government elections in the province till July 15th, local media reports. A quick look at the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi holds virtual meeting with the U.S. President Joe Biden, says India and U.S. are natural partners. Prime Minister raises concerns over Russia-Ukraine war, expresses hope that ongoing talks between Russia and Ukraine will pave the way for peace. India-US 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue to take place in Washington. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jashankar to lead the Indian delegation. Shahbaz Sharif becomes 23rd Prime Minister of Pakistan. 
Former President Maithripala Sirisena calls for formation of an interim government in Sri Lanka amid the economic crisis. And Emmanuel Macron to face Marine Le Pen for presidential elections runoff on April 24th. And with that, we end this bulletin. We will be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News.